Hello everyone, this is the official video tutorial for problem B GCD's array taken from today's code forces round. This problem is an excellent problem on uh, the properties of GCD and a bit of math and it uses only one simple observation in order to make this problem essentially a one line solution. So in this problem we are basically given an array A composed of all the integers in the range L to R where L and R can be up to 10 power of 9. So for example, if L is 3 and R is 7, then the array A is all the numbers from 3 to 7. And given an other integer K, we need to figure out whether it's possible to make the GCD of all the elements in the array A to be greater than 1 by performing at most K operations. The uh, operations which we perform are uh, choosing two numbers from the array A permanently remove them from the array and inserting their product back into the array and this is this counts as one operation so we need to perform this at most k times and we need to make that the we need to make sure that the gcd of all the elements is greater than one so let's say for example that uh, the array only contains one then in that case we can't do anything because the gcd will always be one and um, there are or there's only one number in a so we can't remove any two numbers and that's why the answer would be no. In the second example, where the elements are from 3 to 5, and uh, we perform only one operation, in that case, we can take the number uh, 3 and 4, and we can uh, multiply them together. However, that will give us 12, and the GCD of 12 and 5 is not uh, greater than 1. It's 1. And similarly, if you take 4 and 5 and um, uh, multiply them together you get 20 gcd of 3 and 20 is 1 and even if you take uh, 3 and 5 you get 15 and gcd of 15 and 4 is 1 so in all those three cases the uh, number of operations required is 1 but we can't achieve a gcd of greater than 1 if instead we perform two operations and merge 3 and 4 and then merge that with 5 in that case we perform two operations and we get that the there's only one element in the array uh, which has a value 3 into 4 into 5 which is 60 and um, since uh, so if the query was 3 5 and 2 in that case we would print yes but it's 3 5 and 1 so we will print no in the third example if there's only one element in the array and if it is greater than 1 then obviously we will print yes because uh, without performing any operations we can ensure that the element itself is greater than 1 the gcd of the number itself is greater than 1 and in another example where we take elements 3, 7 and 4 so let's say we have an array uh, where the numbers are from 3 to 7 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 then the key idea for the whole solution and for this example itself is to try and find the minimum number of operations required in order to make the GCD of this whole array A greater than 1 so let's try to find the minimum number of operations required and in order to do that the key idea is that let's say that we fix the gcd so let's say we fix the gcd or uh, to be some number x then we need to ensure that all elements are divisible by x and since we want all numbers in the final array to be divisible by x and uh, because in that case the GCD would be X so since we want all the numbers in the resulting array to be divisible by X this means that we need to ensure that all numbers which are initially not divisible by X so let's say we fix an X to be 3 and let's say we want the GCD to be 3 then in that case we want all numbers in the final array to be divisible by 3 and that means that we need to take all the numbers which are not divisible by 3 4, 5 and 7 and we need to put them inside the numbers which are divisible by 3. So we need to perform some operations required in order to put all the numbers into um, groups which which are divisible by x because in that case if we take the numbers one by one then we essentially multiply all the numbers and that's why when we multiply a number by x it gets divisible by x. So that's essentially what we are doing and uh, you can read the third uh, point which is that we need to ensure all numbers which are not divisible by x 
get put into a group with a number which is divisible by x and by put into a group I mean we take the number x and we take the number which is not divisible by x and we multiply them and put the product back into the array a and we repeatedly do this keep taking the number which is divisible by x and taking the number which is not divisible by x and insert their product back into array a and we need to keep doing this until all numbers become divisible by x. So the cost or basically the number of operations required will be equal to how many numbers are not divisible by x because as I just mentioned we need to take all numbers which are not divisible by x and we need to merge them or put them into groups or combine them with numbers which are divisible by x and we need to keep repeatedly doing this until all the numbers become divisible by x. So that's why the number of operations required will be the number of numbers which are not divisible by x and since we want to minimize this number we want to minimize the number of numbers which are not divisible by x. This means that we need to minimize x because if we choose a value of x let's say we chose a value of x to be 2 or let's say we chose the value of x to be 3 in this case there are 3 numbers 4, 5 and 7 which are not divisible by 3 so if x is 3 this means that the cost is going to be 3 the number of operations required will be 3 and if we chose instead x to be 2 for example then in that case we only need to merge 5 and we only need to merge 7 with any of these 3 even numbers and in this case the cost becomes equal to 2 and if you chose another example let's say x is 4 this means that we need to merge 3 with 4, 5 with 4, 6 with 4 and 7 with 4 in this case the cost is 4 and uh, don't think that the cost will always be equal to x it can actually be different so for example if you chose x to be 5 then in that case also the cost is 4 because all the numbers which are not divisible by 5 need to get merged with 5 so in all these cases you will realize that the smaller the value of x you choose the smaller will be the count of how many numbers are not divisible by x and the smaller will be the cost or the smaller will be the minimum number of operations required and that's why we chose that's why we choose the x value to be equal to 2 and how does this help us like how can we efficiently calculate how many numbers are not divisible by 2 in the range L to R well we can find that in O of 1 because we know that if the number is not divisible by 2 it is odd so we essentially need to find out how many odd numbers are there in the range L to R and we can easily do that in O of 1 so I'll show you a bit into uh, I'll show you in a few minutes how we can do that but you should spend a few minutes understanding uh, why the number of operations will be the number of numbers not divisible by x and why choosing x is 2 will minimize the number of operations required and if you find the minimum number of operations required so let's say you found that value min ops then if this min ops is less than or equal to k we are going to print yes otherwise we will print no and that is the whole logic behind this problem a border case is there when l is equal to r in that case we will just print yes if l is uh, if the number is not 1 and uh, no if the number is 1 but in the non border case uh, we will just check whether the min ops is less than or equal to k and we just figured out that the min ops the minimum number of operations required to ensure that the gcd is 2 is essentially equal to number of odd numbers in the range l to r and in order to find that or uh, let's see how we can find that efficiently so the key idea for finding the count of odd numbers in the range l to r is to use the observation that if you consider an example let's say you consider the interval 1 to 3 in this case both 1 and 3 are odd this means that if you find the total number of numbers in the range 1 to 3 that's going to be 3 if you divide by if you divide that by 2 you will get 1 and if you add 1 you will get 2 so 2 is the number of odd numbers in the range 1 to 3 if you consider another example where you have the range 1 to 7 for example again you will realize that if you take the total number of numbers in the range 1 to 7 that is basically 7 minus 1 plus 1 you will get 7 minus 1 plus 1 is 7 if you divide that by 2 and if you take plus 1 you will get 4 so in general the count of odd numbers in the range L to R 
is equal to r minus l plus 1 by 2 float plus 1 if l is odd and r is odd because r minus l plus 1 gives us the total number of numbers in the range l to r and if you divide that by 2 you get the count of um, if you divide that by 2 and you take the floor you will get half essentially and if you add 1 you will get the accurate value of the number of odd numbers um, because both l and r should be included however in other cases if you consider another example where you take 1 to 2 for example then in that case the size of the interval is 2 and if you just do 2 by 2 you will get 1 so 1 is correct there is only one odd number and if you take another example where you take let's say uh, you take an even starting number and you take an even ending number 2 to 6 then even in this case you will see that only 3 and 5 are the odd numbers and that's why the length of this interval which is 6 minus 2 plus 1 which is 5 so 5 is the size of the array if you flow that you will get 2 and again you can verify that 2 are the number of odd numbers so when uh, in the other case when l is even or r is even in that case we will just print uh, r minus l plus 1 by 2 because r minus l plus 1 again gives you the total count of numbers in the range l to r and if you divide by 2 you essentially take half and if you flow that down you will take you will find the number of odd numbers and these are the essentially two things which you need to check which you need to check these are the two conditions and this becomes your min ops so if this min ops is less than or equal to k we will print yes otherwise we print no and i'll show you this exact same code which essentially just contains uh, two simple lines so in the code first i take in the value of t which is the number of test cases for each test case i take in the value of l r and k as the base case or as the border case if l is 1 and r is 1 we will print no otherwise if l is equal to r we will print yes then um, for the general case num represents the total number of uh, total count of numbers in the range l to r and that's given by um, r minus l plus 1 and the cost is basically num by 2 plus 1 if both r and l are odd otherwise it's just going to be num by 2 float down and you know that when you divide by 2 in c++ automatically it will floor the value down and if this value of the cost is less than or equal to k we will print yes otherwise we will print no with an endl and you can verify that this code gets accepted so that's essentially the whole code for this problem so i hope you like this problem and my solution if you had any doubts do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you